Aristotle, 384 to 322 BCE, was a Greek philosopher, polymath, student of Plato, and teacher of Alexander the Great. His contributions span various fields, including ethics, metaphysics, politics, and the natural sciences. Aristotle's philosophical works, such as Nicomachean Ethics and Politics, remain influential, shaping Western thought for centuries. He founded the Lyceum and made significant contributions to fields like biology, laying the groundwork for scientific inquiry. Excellence is never an accident. It is always the result of high intention, sincere effort, and intelligent execution, it represents the wise choice of many alternatives, choice, not chance, determines your destiny. Anybody can become angry, that is easy, but to be angry with the right person and to the right degree and at the right time and for the right purpose, and in the right way, that is not within everybody's power and is not easy. Man is by nature a social animal, an individual who is unsocial naturally and not accidentally is either beneath our notice or more than human. Society is something that precedes the individual. Anyone who either cannot lead the common life or is so self-sufficient as not to need to, and therefore does not partake of society, is either a beast or a god. The wise man does not expose himself needlessly to danger, since there are few things for which he cares sufficiently, but he is willing, in great crises, to give even his life knowing that under certain conditions it is not worth while to live. He is of a disposition to do men service, though he is ashamed to have a service done to him. To confer a kindness is a mark of superiority, to receive one is a mark of subordination. He does not take part in public displays. He is open in his dislikes and preferences, he talks and acts frankly, because of his contempt for men and things. He is never fired with admiration, since there is nothing great in his eyes. He cannot live in complaisance with others, except it be a friend, complaisance is the characteristic of a slave. He never feels malice, and always forgets and passes over injuries. He is not fond of talking. It is no concern of his that he should be praised, or that others should be blamed. He does not speak evil of others, even of his enemies, unless it be to themselves. His carriage is sedate, his voice deep, his speech measured, he is not given to hurry, for he is concerned about only a few things, he is not prone to vehemence, for he thinks nothing very important. A shrill voice and hasty steps come to a man through care. He bears the accidents of life with dignity and grace, making the best of his circumstances, like a skillful general who marshals his limited forces with the strategy of war. He is his own best friend, and takes delight in privacy whereas the man of no virtue or ability is his own worst enemy, and is afraid of solitude. Happiness does not consist in amusement. In fact, it would be strange if our end were amusement, and if we were to labor and suffer hardships all our life merely to amuse ourselves. A happy life is regarded as a life in conformity with virtue. It is a life that involves effort and is not spent in amusement. Men acquire a particular quality by constantly acting a particular way, you become just by performing just actions, temperate by performing temperate actions, brave by performing brave actions. A tyrant must put on the appearance of uncommon devotion to religion. Subjects are less apprehensive of illegal treatment from a ruler whom they consider God-fearing and pious. On the other hand, they do less easily move against him, believing that he has the gods on his side. For man, when perfected, is the best of animals, but, when separated from law and justice, he is the worst of all, since armed injustice is the more dangerous, 
and he is equipped at birth with the arms of intelligence and with moral qualities which he may use for the worst ends. Wherefore, if he have not virtue, he is the most unholy and the most savage of animals, and the most full of lust and gluttony. But justice is the bond of men in states, and the administration of justice, which is the determination of what is just, is the principle of order in political society. The beauty of the soul shines out when a man bears with composure one heavy mischance after another, not because he does not feel them, but because he is a man of high and heroic temper. Bad people, are in conflict with themselves, they desire one thing and will another, like the incontinent who choose harmful pleasures instead of what they themselves believe to be good. It is absurd to hold that a man should be ashamed of an inability to defend himself with his limbs, but not ashamed of an inability to defend himself with speech and reason, for the use of rational speech is more distinctive of a human being than the use of his limbs. We must not listen to those who advise us being men to think human thoughts, and being mortal to think mortal thoughts but must put on immortality as much as possible and strain every nerve to live according to that best part of us, which, being small in bulk, yet much more in its power and honor surpasses all else. There is an ideal of excellence for any particular craft or occupation, similarly there must be an excellent that we can achieve as human beings. That is, we can live our lives as a whole in such a way that they can be judged not just as excellent in this respect or in that occupation, but as excellent, period. Only when we develop our truly human capacities sufficiently to achieve this human excellent will we have lives blessed with happiness. The greater the number of owners, the less the respect for common property. People are much more careful of their personal possessions than of those owned communally, they exercise care over common property only in so far as they are personally affected. The investigation of the truth is in one way hard, in another easy. An indication of this is found in the fact that no one is able to attain the truth adequately, while, on the other hand, no one fails entirely, but everyone says something true about the nature of all things, and while individually they contribute little or nothing to the truth, by the union of all a considerable amount is amassed. A beginning is that which does not itself follow anything by causal necessity, but after which something naturally is or comes to be. An end, on the contrary, is that which itself naturally follows some other thing, either by necessity, or as a rule, but has nothing following it. A middle is that which follows something as some other thing follows it. A well-constructed plot, therefore, must neither begin nor end haphazardly, but conform to these principles.